Can you feel that? Your heart rate is increasing. Your pupils are dilated. The hairs on the back of your skinny little nerd neck might be standing on end. That's because you are looking at one of the most sought after cars ever produced. Without this car, this channel might not exist. It came from Japan. It's bad as fuck and they call it Godzilla. It's time to go bumper to bumper on the fan favorite Nissan, the one, the only legendary R34 Skyline GTR V-Spec. Welcome to my new show. It's 2019, we got new shows. Up to Speed is still on Thursdays, but this show is gonna be every Tuesday. It's called Bumper to Bumper. It's an in-depth look at the features and tech inside of the coolest cars on the planet. I'm gonna show you everything about your favorite cars. Old, new, stock, modded, inside, outside, bumper to bumper. Do you skid it? <laughs> If you're of a certain age group, i.e. my age group, you grew up playing racing games on PlayStation, watching the Fast and the Furious, and you were absolutely obsessed with Initial D. In all three of those franchises, the Nissan GTR plays a pivotal role. It was the best car in Gran Turismo 2. Paul Walker drove one in Too Fast, Too Furious, and the Godfoot was a menace on the mountain. It was a huge deal. But in the US, one factor is far and away the most significant aspect of Skyline GTR lore. We never got it. But wait, if this car wasn't ever sold here, then how is this one here? Well, if a car is 25 years or older, regardless of origin, it can be imported into the US and sold as a used car. But James, this car is a 99, so it, it's only 20 years old, not, not 25. So. What the heck? It's what you call show and display legal. That means it can be driven on the road, but no more than 2,500 miles a year. And technically, you're only supposed to drive it to shows or to maintain it. This thing has been living in a lab, and pretty soon, it's gonna be the only California legal R34 in the entire state. California, here we come. The Skyline GTR wasn't the only Skyline. There were four-door sedans, coupes, both naturally aspirated and turbocharged motors, but the top of the Skyline heap was the all-wheel drive, twin turbo, fast as fuck GTR, which brings us to this. The R34 Skyline debuted in 1998 with the GTR once again being the ultimate model, but this time there is something even more ultimate. This Skyline GTR is a GTR V-Spec. Right off the bat, you'll see the beautiful paint. This color is called Midnight Purple too. Very likely a nod to the infamous Midnight Club street racing syndicate in Japan. The previous GTR, the R33, was the first Skyline to wear the special violent paint. But this one has like more color changey stuff in it. And it's really a trip to walk around the car. At first it's like purple, but then as you pass, it turns green, and sometimes if the light is lower, it looks black and even gold. We did our best to light it, but there's really no way that you guys can see how insane this paint looks. There were only 282 Midnight Purple V-Specs ever built, making this car extremely rare. Legend has it that all Midnight Purple R34 sold out in 10 days. The GTR styling is special as well. Unlike the R32's fairly muted appearance, the R34 lets you know right off the bat, hey, I'm different. I'm the racing one. The headlights up front are like a furrowed brow making it look like super angry. And the front grills look like the mouth of a freaking bull shark just swimming through the waves, looking for kooks, biting half. Oh, are you on a paddle board? Shut up, not today! The rear fenders bulge out like the laurels of the buffest horse you've ever seen. And to top it all off is this adjustable dual element wing. You can have Thanksgiving on top of this thing. It's fucking sick, dude. The fact that it's dual element reduces drag and increases 
potential down first. This thing was designed to be driven at the limit. The rear of the car also has another feature that we're not used to seeing in the US, a fog lamp. This right here is fog lamp, which makes the car easier to see from behind in dense fog. It wasn't required for sale in Japan, but European laws mandate that every car come with a rear fog, which also means that Europe got this car. You know who else got it? New Zealand, Hong Kong, Singapore. In Singapore, they don't even let you chew gum. You know who didn't get it? Us. <laughs> now you can't talk about the R34 without mentioning the brake lights. They say simplicity is the ultimate in sophistication and these lights definitely make a great case for that being true. You know, for a lot of people, these lights are the most memorable part of the car because it's the last thing they see as it rips by them faster than the speed of sound on the Shotoko Highway. <laughs> There's rubber deflectors right behind this wheel that when air is sucked in through the front scoops, it pushes it to the center of the brake rotor. And because of the action of the rotor, it sucks all the air and cools the metal from the back. This keeps the brakes cool and prevents fade during long drives with a bunch of heavy braking. The V-Spec also comes with stiffer suspension to keep the car planted in the turn. And all R34s have this neat little front splitter up front. This limits air from going under the car and helps push it over it, pushing the front of the car towards the road. In the rear, the V-Spec specific carbon fiber diffuser speeds up the air, leaving the back of the car, creating a low pressure zone under the rear instead of behind it, which puts more weight on the rear wheels, which increases grip. The chair rides on 18 inch wheels and is brought to a stop by 324 millimeter Brembo, four piston brakes in the front and two piston brakes in the back. Enough about the outside. Let's check out the inside. First things first, I cannot believe that I am inside of an R34 GTR. Guess what freshman James, you made it. First thing you notice, this is a Japanese sports car from the 90s. So the interior is very, very, very sparse. There's not a lot going on. As far as creature comforts go, there's none, but that's not what this car is for. This car is for driving and driving fast. It's got harness cutouts in the freaking seats for God's sake. These bolsters are huge too, so you rip around the Tuge. Embarrassing Takume without sliding around or making your legs all tired. The cluster is very driver focused and super simple. And one thing that I find super interesting about the cluster is the speedo only goes up to 180 kilometers an hour. Now that is about 110 miles per hour. I know that because I'm a math boy. Needless to say, it goes much faster than that. So a popular upgrade is like a Nismo cluster, which goes up to 320, which is about 200 miles an hour, which makes a lot more sense for a car called Godzilla. The R34 also got a six-speed transmission as opposed to the five-speed in the R32 and the R33. And just like running through the gears with this thing parked, it's amazing. This is me starting the car. <laughs> the center console is super minimal. It's a Japanese car from the 90s. It's got climate control. One feature that's very foreign to me because I'm an American is this headlight height controller, which lets you adjust the angle of the headlights depending on the conditions. If we had headlight adjuster controllers, I think America would collapse in about seven days because everyone's a stupid <laughs> And already we got bro dozers shining blue lights into your eyes. <laughs> we just can't handle it. Right above the super simple center console is the jewel of the R34's interior. The multi-function display, or MFD, a feature that was light years ahead of its time in 99, just like the Matrix. And frankly, one of the most underrated parts of the R34, the MFD is this LCD screen with a digital readout of critical engine functions like boost pressure, gas pedal position, fuel injector duty cycle, <laughs> oil temp, water temp, exhaust temp, intake slash intercooler temp. These are all super useful at the track and super fun when you're just driving around town. It also has a shift light function that flashes red 
to tell you, hey, shift. Now this next thing is probably the coolest thing I have ever seen in any car, especially one from the 90s. It's a TV button. It says TV on it. And if you had this special Nissan radio, you could watch TV in your freaking dash. Stuff like the MFD are super commonplace in cars today, but remember, the R34 is 20 years old. Next year it can drink. We're throwing it a party. We're taking it to New Orleans. And at the time of the GTR's release, the MFD was seen as a revolutionary fusion of digital and analog technology and just a glimmer of what the future had to offer. Oddly enough, the most V-Spec stuff about the V-Spec is underneath the car. One of those things is the Atezza ETS Pro all-wheel drive system. That means that not only can the car selectively send torque from the front or rear wheels depending on driving conditions, but the V-Spec also has an active limited slip differential, meaning it can control how much the rear diff locks up depending on the power being sent to it. So if it's open, it's really easy to turn. If it's locked, then you get skids. <laughs> the more power being sent to the rear, the more locked up it is. This makes the V-Spec extremely capable on sketchy mountain roads like Mount Akina, which are often covered in water and dirt. This thing was made 20 years ago, dude. Another really exciting thing under the car is a system called Super High Cast, which helps the GTR get around turns. Essentially, the system uses electronic actuators to turn the rear wheels one degree in either direction, helping turn the car at low speeds. The rear wheels turn in the opposite direction of the front ones, which rotates the car faster. But at high speeds, the rear wheels turn in the same direction as the fronts, which keeps the car stable during fast lane changes. Now, a lot of modern sports cars do have active rear steering, but these early systems were a little bit unpredictable. I had it on an S13 and I took it out. So much has gone into this car. Fender flares, big brakes, air ducts, splitters, spoilers, computer screens, and TVs in the dashboard. None of that stuff means anything. In fact, it would be kind of lame if this car wasn't fast as And this car is fast as Now the R32, R33, and R34 GTRs are all powered by the legendary RB26 DETT inline six engine. In Catholic school terms, the looks and all wheel drive are the father and the son, which makes the RB26 the Holy Spirit without a doubt. The engine is the soul of the R34. This six cylinder mill uses two parallel turbos, meaning each turbo is powered by three cylinders and they work independently of each other. The twin Garrett T28 turbos have a ball bearing and a lighter ceramic exhaust wheel inside, which allows them to spool up super fast. The result is one bar or 15 pounds of boost. The RB also gets major street cred with its individual throttle bodies, which is unique to the RB engine family. The RB26 has a cast engine block, making it super strong straight from the factory. This made it a tuner's dream, and it's not uncommon to see GTRs making 600, 800, or even 1,000 horsepower with a tune and upgraded internal. The Skyline GTR is a living legend. The R34 literally, no hyperbole, birthed an entire generation of automotive enthusiasts. This is one of the first cars that I thought was cool. And a lot of you probably think the same. It's really important. Thanks for watching our new show, Bumper to Bumper. Every Tuesday, I'm gonna have another car and I'm gonna take you through it and tell you everything about it. You like JDM Legends? Watch this episode of our other new show, Prestado. It's in Spanish, but it's for everybody. You wanna learn more about the history of the GTR? Check out this episode of Up to Speed. Follow me on Instagram, at James Bumphrey. Follow Donut, at Donut Media. Smash that like button. Dude, let's get this new show trending, guys. Let's make this shit bigger than Up to Speed, all right? It's 2019. I'm a grown man. I have a girlfriend now, and I wanna buy a house. I love you.